hi ooh super bright sun <laughs> um we're taking a break from our regularly scheduled program i feel weird not covering that okay whatever um because today is the release day for fence striking distance and i'm gonna go to barnes and noble and pick up my copy and also maybe peruse the shelves a little bit pick up another book make a tiktok <laughs> let's do it oh my hair <laughs> hey hi hello and welcome to the barnes and noble parking lot so i've gotten pretty good as of late about going in and getting only what i meant to so i got it might be backwards Mm, Fence Striking Distance by Sarah Reese Brennan, which is based off of the series of graphic novels written by P.S. Pic uh, C.S. Picot? C.S. Picot. And illustrated by Joanna the Mad, I believe, but I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, I will check on that and tell you. And then also, because I've been eyeing it for a minute, Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bay... Ba I don't know if it's Byron or Byron. I need to look that up too. I'm really just, I should look up authors' names before I try to say them. Um, and I was going to just include this little clip in the current vlog that I'm filming, but it's Fences release day, so how fun would it be to do like a release day reading vlog? So we're gonna do that instead. Welcome to the release day reading vlog. <laughs> oh, I'm a mess. Also my hair is like flying in the AC. Yeah, so I don't know if I've actually mentioned this on my channel. I work, ooh, moving the camera. Um, I work graveyard shift, like third shift, like 9 to p.m. to 5 a.m. So it's currently 5 p.m. Because um, I wake up at like 2 in the afternoon because those are my sleep hours or like 6 to 2. Um, but yeah, let's go on this journey together. It's uh, there's a good bet that most of this reading vlog I'm, I'm maybe gonna be at work for we'll talk about that later hi it's almost 2 a.m. Um, and <laughs> I have to read this before I can read striking distance so I'm gonna do that now um, I'm gonna take my lunch in about half an hour so hopefully I can finish this go on lunch eat lunch then start striking distance and I'll finish it tomorrow because it's there's there's not enough hours left <laughs> cheers I know you literally can't tell because there's a mask covering my face but I have like a severe amount of um what's it called secondhand embarrassment every time I read one of these <laughs> like Nicholas Sorry about that. That was just me having a moment over Saiji and Nicholas. It's fine. Um, it's 2.20. I finished volume four. That's the word. I, words are hard sometimes. Finished volume four of Fence. I'm going to go take my lunch, eat my salad, and then we're going to start Fence Striking Distance. And I just have to say, I'm stoked. I'm 87 pages into this book, and oh boy, <laughs> um, I have a lot of feelings, namely, what the fuck, that's my primary feeling, okay, we'll talk about it more in a minute. Hi. I'm sorry it's dark in here. Um, it is 5am, <laughs> I just got off work, oh, it is Chilly, it's definitely autumn now. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm like cold. Oh, I should have brought like a jacket, like a real jacket. Um, I'm 130 pages into Fence, Striking Distance. I have some feelings, I have some things to say, but we're gonna talk about them in bed because it's not a Lex Reads vlog if I haven't laid in bed for part of it. So let's do it. Um, I'll see you at home. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to bed. Um, this might not be a good angle, but I 
still don't know where my tripod is. It's somewhere in my closet. We don't need to talk about it. So, like I said, I'm about 130 pages in, which is like not quite halfway. I think 160 pages is about halfway. So I think it's like just over 320 pages. Um, it... Okay, it's interesting. First of all, if you have heard me talk about any of the graphic novels up to this point, I've talked about them in a few different blogs and wrap-ups and things, um, you may or may not know that I would die for Nicholas Cox. Nicholas is my favorite character, and I adore him. So how fence-striking distance works is every chapter, it's, it's like third person, but every chapter follows a specific characters and it like notates it at the beginning of the character so it'll be like chapter one Aiden chapter two Nicholas etc etc Nicholas's chapters are my least favorite and Aiden's are my favorite which didn't see coming that was a plot twist of the century and I do mean really like really and honestly I was a little bit shook that Aiden in the novelization is actually my favorite character and that Nicholas might be my least favorite um, that being said, I don't want to, okay, I don't want this to be mean, like, I feel, I feel bad saying this, it, the writing feels very young, which, I mean, to be fair, half of the main characters are 14, so they, they are very young, but, like, for YA, it just, like, f it reads very young. The dialogue is not my favorite, and if I never read the word bro again it'll be too soon bro every other sentence it's a little bit annoying um every single one of these boys is a disaster gay which same i respect that um and it reads like fan fiction kind of but like that's i also always pause before i say that because I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. First of all, fanfiction is my favorite thing in the entire world. I read a ton of fanfiction. I write a ton of fanfiction. I love fanfiction. So I don't think it's a bad thing for a story to read like fanfiction. However, this kind of reads like fanfiction that was written by a 15 year old girl about boys, which isn't a compliment necessarily. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna finish it tomorrow. We can talk about it more tomorrow. For now, it is 5.40 a.m., 5.30 a.m., and it is sleep time. So I'll catch you tomorrow afternoon. But I, like, wanna keep reading it. Like, like it's not necessarily the, the it's, it's not necessarily the best written piece of literature I've read as of late, but it's fun and very tropey. And I dig that, so. I don't know, we'll see how the second half goes. <laughs> it probably looks like the same day. It's not, it's 25 hours, 25, 24 hours later, it's 5, 8, 5 30 a.m. tomorrow. On the first, I guess, technically. Um, I can't be loud because my roommate is sleeping and she has to get up for work in like an hour. I'm in pain. Like I'm distressed. I had like, like a meltdown about this book, which we're gonna talk about tomorrow afternoon when I sit down and do my like wrap up. We're gonna chat about that, but I can't talk about it right now because my roommate is asleep, but I almost cried, um, had a little bit of a breakdown. This book did not have the right to be as emotionally painful as it ended up being. Um, although to be fair, I think, I think it was this emotionally painful for like very personal reasons, which we can talk about later. Um, everything hurts. I'm going to go to sleep. 
pi. Fence striking distance hurt me inside. I was in, I was I was distraught last night because this book is not happy. It was a fun time until it was no longer a fun time. The ending, I think, was supposed to make me feel hopeful. It didn't. Instead, I just feel broken inside. Um, and I don't want this to be spoilery because the book came out two days ago, so you probably haven't read it. I don't think it's fair for me to ruin it for you. Okay, let's just, let's just talk through the broad strokes, I guess. Um, fence, striking distance, it's a YA book following the boys of King Row, King's Row, who we know from the graphic novel series. Um, man oh man, it's a novelization written by Sarah Reese Brennan based off of the graphic novels. So remember when I said it read like fanfiction? In a way, it kind of is like sanctioned fanfiction. Um, I know she, like, talked with and worked with C.S. Picot, but C.S. Picot did not write it. And I'm not even gonna lie to you, I hope the graphic novels maybe are happier. The rest of the graphic novels, I hope they're happier than this book was, because this book hurt me a lot. So here's the thing. We follow four of the Fencers as main characters, and then Eugene is like an important side character. So we follow Aiden and Harvard, and then Saiji and Nicholas, and we have like two main plots going on. We have, or a few, I guess, because we're following four characters, we have like a handful. We have two characters figuring out dating, and they also, it's, there's fake dating, and there's a friends to lovers element, and then we have Saiji trying to deal with his, like, inner turmoil about leaving Exton and joining King's Row and making friends. And I'm not gonna lie, I feel like Saiji is supposed to be autistic. But I'd have to do some more digging to confirm or deny that statement. That's just how it felt to me. Um, and then Nicholas, who, and Saiji, and, like, trying to figure out being friends because they're both awkward. But also, Nicholas dealing with, like, classism, because he's not rich like the other boys at this prep school. There was, like, a lot going on. Um, the writing was good, but not my favorite. Like, it wasn't the best writing. The first few chapters, it, like, took me a minute to get used to the writing, because it's a lot different than I'm used to reading in YA books. Like I said earlier in this vlog, it reads a little bit younger, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, and then in the middle, you know, I was like reading it and I was like, yeah, this is fine, this is like fun. And then in the middle, I got really invested. That's why I didn't vlog any of the second half of the book. I got really invested, read the last 200 pages in an hour and 20 minutes or whatever, and then just like stared at a wall for half an hour because I was so sad. And in case you didn't know, one of my favorite tropes is friends to lovers. It's great. Um, it's three out of five stars. It was good. It was not my favorite book I've ever read. It's gonna stick with me for a long time because I'm so emotionally distressed. The writing's not my favorite. The dialogue. The dialogue, I don't love the dialogue. I'm not gonna lie. Specifically Eugene. The dialogue felt kind of like caricatures. Like, I could tell a grown woman was trying really hard to write teenage boys, and I think, in some regards, she did not succeed. Um, just like I said, because I, the dialogue is kind of wooden. If I never have to read the word bro again, it'll be too soon.
every other sentence. Bro. 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 And I mean, like, yeah, teenage boys say bro, I say bro. But, like, not like that. Not like that. We'll talk about this more in my wrap-up. God, my heart just feels things that it doesn't want to feel. Thanks for chilling with me. I'm going on this adventure. Fence striking distance is out now. If it sounds like something you'd be interested in, I recommend you pick it up. If it doesn't sound like something you'd be interested in, I don't think you're missing out on, you know, like a stunning piece of literature, so. Yep. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. I need to go take a depression nap because this book broke me. I'm fine. We're great. Bye, friends. See you later this week.